Welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Wednesday and it's time for a Hidden Gems. Now, what are Hidden Gems? Well, Hidden Gems is the episode where I take a particular trick from a Penguin Live or an Alakazam Academy or a Masterclass or an At The Table or even a book like we're going to do this week and I bring it to your attention. You see, there are so many tricks out there that are very, very old that are just as good as some of the latest and greatest tricks, but we overlook them because we're looking for the newest thing in magic. And the whole idea of this video series is to bring your attention tricks that are a little bit older that you might not have seen before. And today I'm going to be talking about a book. Now the book is Spectacle by Stephen Minch. You can still get this book. It's very difficult to get a hold of. You can still get it, but it was published by Ellen L Publishing. And uh, Murphy's Magic have the rights to everything from Ellen L, and they have now released this book as an ebook. So if you can't get a physical copy, you can get it as an ebook. And I think that this is one of the best books ever written. Uh, it is a collection of modern wonders. And what made this book interesting is, uh, first of all, it was published in 1990. So that's a long time ago now, right? It's 22 years ago. And uh, it was a collection of routines from various different magicians. And you had them in various different chapters. So chapter one was cards, chapter two was coins, chapter three was uh, miscellaneous close-up, chapter four was mentalism, chapter five was stage. So there was something there for everybody. And the contributor list to this book is literally the who's who. You know, you look at it, Rudy Kobe, Jeff Latter, Jay Sankey, Ray Crosby, uh, Bill Goodwin, Richard Kaufman, David Solomon, Tommy Wonder, Daryl, David Roth, the list goes on and on and on. We've even got Rocco Solano, we've got Ray Grisma, uh, Jonathan Pendragon. Oh my God, what an amazing list of names. And that's just a few of them. Um, and, and although this book was very, very popular, I found that there's a few tricks in there that are often overlooked. And I think the reason is there's so much really good material in there that it's very easy to overlook tricks. Uh, it, it just is. It's very easy to overlook stuff. But uh, although there's something incredible in there, there's so many different incredible tricks. The one that I want to bring to your attention, nobody ever remembers. Even people that have got this book, they forget about this trick. And that is the third trick in the book, page 15. So let's turn to page 15, the 15th uh, page. There we go. The trick in question is by Jeff Latter. Now, if you don't know Jeff Latter, Jeff Latter is one of the greatest coin magicians of all time. I've spoken about Jeff Latter many, many times on this channel. Uh, Jeff is amazing. He is uh, an absolute legend. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us now, but his legacy lives on. He was one of the four New York coin guys, along with David Roth, uh, Michael Rubenstein, and uh, Mike Gallup. And uh, in this book, he published a couple of different routines. And one of the tricks he published was a trick called Deadlier Than The Male, which is a bit weird for, uh, for Jeff because it's actually a card trick and not a coin trick as he's known as a coin guy. Um, but uh, this is an amazing card trick. Like this is an absolutely amazing card trick. And I think one of the reasons it's overlooked is because maybe it's Jeff Latter and it's a card trick. Maybe it's because of the plot, it's a sandwich trick. And, you know, there's so many sandwich tricks out there. It's very easy to flick through a book and go, oh, it's a sandwich trick, I won't bother. But this trick is amazing. Let me just read the effect out for you very, very quickly. Um, two, red two red queens removed from the deck and laid face up on top of on top of it. Another card is freely chosen by the spectator, noted and returned to the centre of the pack. Explain the red queens will travel down into the deck, search for the chosen card and bring it back. The performer passes his hand over the deck and the queens vanish. With another pass of the hand, they reappear with a face down card in between them. When it's turned face up, it's found to be the selected card. And then the, uh, the performer says that he's going to do it again. Uh, the spectator is asked to place uh, his card once more in the centre of the pack. The queens then position face up, one at the top and the other at the bottom of the deck. Suddenly they vanish in full view, and when the deck spread, the queens are found in the centre with a single face down card in between them, and that is the selected card. The performer then suggests that the queens uh, were too quick, so the effect is going to be repeated a third and final time and uh, it's going to go in slow motion. The spectator returns his card to the deck, but this time somewhere near the top. The queens are inserted face up near the bottom of the pack and left sticking widely from the top left corner. They then seem to run through the deck until they find the selected card. Um, they are then removed from the deck and sure enough between them is a single card. It is the selected card. That's what it is basically. It's a uh, 
It's a slow motion sandwich routine. And it's really good. It's really, really good. Like, it's absolutely amazing. I do a lot of sandwich tricks. Um, and I, I find that the sandwich plot is really fascinating. Laymen love it. Laymen love... Uh, they just do. It's something that I've done in gigs an awful lot. It always gets a really great reaction. And this is great because it's a step-by-step -step, um, revelation of a card. You know, I do like things when they're multi-layered. I do like things where uh, each phase builds from one phase to the next. And that's what you have here. Each phase builds, each phase gets better. And it is an incredibly strong trick. Now, I'm going to perform it for you first of all, so you can actually have a look at it, and then very quickly talk about why it's so good and why you should learn. <laughs> Nobody ever trusts me, but I really appreciate that. That's nice. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Hey, hey. Ah, uh, let me talk. Right. I'm going to do something with the four kings, uh, with the two red kings, okay? I'm going to leave them on top of the deck, and you can pick any card you want to, but you can't pick one of the two red kings. So I'm going to leave them on top. I'm going to riffle down the deck. You're going to say stop. And I'll show you and everyone else the card, okay? So just say stop. Do you remember that card? That's the card. Can everyone see it? Really important you remember it, because later on when I dramatically say this is your card, you go, I don't know. It's not so good. So I know that your card's not a red king, right? I'm going to try and find your card in one second. Would that be good? Look, if I take the red kings and just wave them over the pack, what happens is one card appears in between them and one card, and that's the uh, the two of spades. Is that your card? Yeah. Now, the first time I saw that, I forgot to applaud as well, so don't worry about it. <laughs> we'll we'll say, no, no, please stop your applause. You're a weak finish. I'll do it again. I'm going to put the kings face up at the top and the bottom of the deck, okay? And you're going to take your card and put it face down in the middle any time you want to say stop. Cool. Put the card back there. And just so you guys know I'm not cheating, do you see the card there? Yeah. It goes about, well you put that about halfway down, would you agree? Can you can you push it in for me yourself? So you see that card going into the middle, is that fair? We, we see the king on the top, the king on the bottom. We know your card's somewhere in the middle. Watch this, if I just do that, one card appears in between. I mean, this is this is getting weird now. This is not bad. Now, I'm going to do this one last time, but in slow motion. I'm going to put a king on the top, king on the bottom. Do me a favour, just say stop. Cool. Can you put your card right back there for me on that, that right there? So that card goes right there. Is that fair? So we've got a king on the top, we've got a king on the bottom, and we've got your card in the middle. Now watch, we're going to do this in slow motion. If I take the pack and twist, did you see the king disappear off the top and the king disappear off the bottom? The reason it did is because they're travelling down into the deck. You see, the one king's gone down slightly, the other king's gone up slightly. They're actually eliminating cards until they find your card. This is what I mean about going in slow motion. Look, one on the top, one on the bottom. It's about 20 cards in between. Do you see them? If I do this, they disappear off the top, they disappear off the bottom, one card appears in between them, one card only, it can't be, could it be, if it was, this would be a miracle, there it is. Wow! So full disclosure, I mean, it's not the easiest trick in the world to learn, it's not uh, self-working by any stretch of the imagination, and, and, and again, sometimes I actually only do the final phase, I only do the slow motion aspect of the routine where everything happens in slow motion. I, I uh, frequently will not do the first two phases or I'll take that slow motion phase and I'll incorporate it into a longer routine using other moves and other sequences. Uh, and that's that's something that you can do as well and that works really, really well. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a really engaging plot. It's very clear, it's very direct and I love the moment where the queens are slowly going through the deck to find the selected card. It's it's a very strong moment, it really is. Um, so yeah, you can learn it from Stephen Minch's Spectacle. It's a great book to get anyway. I mean, there's some uh, there's there's some amazing, absolutely amazing routines in here. Let me just tell you another couple of them very very quickly. Um, okay, uh, so the double lift pass by Richard Kaufman is a very interesting approach to doing a pass as you do a double lift. And it's kind of like a, a turnover style pass, but it's covered with a double lift, which is very, very interesting. Uh, a case of mistaken identity is really interesting. It's by Bill Goodwin, and it uses the coffin change uh, in a very unique way. And it's kind of like a four for one transposition outside of a box, but the deck is devolved. That's really good. Uh, Color Reset by Louis Falanga is great. 
It's uh, if it's the one I'm thinking of. Hang on, let me just check. I'm really sure it is. Page thirty-five. Uh, yeah, it's the one I think it is. Yeah. So if you know Reset by Paul Harris, which is where uh, you know the classic transposition between four aces and four jacks, uh, it's a similar sort of thing. But the cards, the backs of the cards are different colours as well, which adds an extra dimension. There's some amazing coin routines in here. This is where Daryl first published his now classic elbow, knee and neck um, from the Elvin Horde by Jeff Latter is very, very good. Um, just so much really good stuff. So much really good stuff. So yeah, um, it's well worth checking out. It's called Spectacle. It's by Stephen Minch. And when you get it, I want you to go straight to the Jeff Latter routine. It's page 15. Go check it out. Learn it. Watch it. You can't watch it because it's a book. Learn it and perform it. It's a really great multi-layered sandwich routine. So there you go, guys. That's another Hidden Gems in the bag. Thank you once again for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if there's anything else that you want me to do with regards to the Hidden Gems series. I'm getting great feedback from it, which is amazing. And as long as I get great feedback, I'm going to carry on doing it. And once again, thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for promoting the channel. Uh, and thank you for everyone that has really nice things to say. Again, I really appreciate it. Don't forget, if you haven't already gone and done so, please check out the Craig and Ryan Review Show. That went live today at 5 o'clock. And I'll be back again tomorrow with three videos one at two, one at six, one at nine. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon. My name's Craig from Magic TV.